Like, have, have I pushed pet before? Have. Be oh, oh. Do you also shit on the bed? This is your daily catch up. You don't pee in your bed, man. So by popular demand, um, mm. I mean, all five of you guys that asked for it. Lah. We are finally going to talk Jerry. about the Johnny Depp versus Ooh. Amber Heard case to Denise's delight because she watches the live stream every single night <laughs> yeah, for the last I week. Do, do you do? I do. How long is it? It's oh, like, it starts around hours, like 9 right? p.m. and it usually ends at like 5 p.m. But then, 5 a.m. But then the lawyers who, I, who are on the panel commentating, right, they will stay on till like- And you watch noon. every night? Yeah, I watch every night, but I don't watch the full thing every night. I should mention right. that at 12 a.m. our time, 12 a.m. their time, they go for lunch break. And then you have to wait for one hour of nothingness. <laughs> yeah. No, right. but then if there's the commentary, then the lawyers will be commenting on what happened. Oh, yeah. so you watch the live stream with comment. Yeah, uh, because if not, okay. I don't understand. And mm -hmm. then I also watch the daily recaps. Do you think this is really like, they are live streaming purely for entertainment? I think there's a specific reason why like the lawyers or like Johnny's team specifically wanted to live stream it. La. Basically, they are like prosecuting the case in Virginia, which I mean, firstly, it's because the Washington Post is headquartered there. So Washington Post, why it's relevant is because the whole defamation suit is centered around this article that Amber Heard had published in the Washington Post that says she was abused by a partner. And everyone just figured out that this partner is clear she's referring to Johnny Depp. Lah. Mm, yeah, right. And then that's why this whole suit is happening in the first place. But Virginia is also one of the states that allows for live streaming of cases. And I mean, people have been speculating that Johnny Depp's aim isn't to win the trial at all, is to rehab his public uh, yeah. image, opinion, yeah, yeah, public image. And so- Which is clearly working, la, right? Yeah. From what I've seen on, or at least heard in, in that. Heard. Yes. <laughs> no, but the thing is that like- From so, the depths of the cock. <laughs> nice la. No, no, no. So like looking at some of Johnny, the- Johnny, back to you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Looking at some of the online comments, right? It is 99.999998%, right? All just- in favor of Johnny Depp. And it's so ridiculous to the point where it's, even if it's a clip of something that is like mildly neutral, right? Everyone will be like, you see lah, like can't believe Amber Heard, you know, like Johnny yeah. Depp is definitely gonna win. And like, it's crazy. I feel like some of them are bots. Cause oh. I, I, I can't see. They, she has actually alleged that though, that he he's using bots to like create negative sentiment about her, mm. which is part of their counterclaim suit. La. So Amber Heard, wow, after being lawyers, sued uh. by Johnny, she counter sued him saying, you defame me also. Wait, sorry, can, can I get bring, be brought up to speed with the whole situation? So Johnny Depp <sighs> and Amber Heard were married yes. a few years back. And then after that, they- But only married for one year. Oh, okay. So they, they were together for a while and then they got married for one year. Okay, then after then they got divorced mm. because of um, abuse or whatever. So Alleged. initially, uh, Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of domestic abuse. Later, after several years, it came out and um, Johnny Depp's side of the story, I mean, through one of his ex-lawyers was that actually he was the victim in the relationship. Okay, okay. Then then so I also understand crazy, that they, yeah. he lost a lot of like jobs and opportunities because of that, right? Yeah, so like Fantastic Beast 3, for example, was like a very popular- Oh, oh but you dodged it though, good on you. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> He's the lowest performing like of oh. the entire franchise. Right, right, right. And that would have ruined his career also. <laughs> same, same. But like Pirates of the Caribbean also, like, so like when Disney is doing a new one, they're not going to call him yeah, back, things like that. Yeah, but then there was also another court case with the two of them in the UK. That was for the divorce. So that was because uh, of uh, a libel suit against The Sun. The Sun also published something that Amber Heard had said. The Sun is a newspaper in they the UK. They have a oh, Sun? Oh, <laughs> the Sun. Yeah, that's right. The Sun oh, newspaper. Whoa. Basically, they called him a wife beater in like an article. And then after that, he sued them for defamation. But they actually won that case because the they said- The Sun won the, the, the case. The, the, yeah, like the Johnny Depp lost the case, essentially. Because they said, we are quoting Amber Heard. So we are not misquoting. Yeah. yeah. yeah so they won that suit. Right, right. TLDR, yeah. Okay, then now is Johnny Depp is suing Amber for defamation from the first yes. uh, from that sun one. Uh. Yeah, from, but no, from the Washington Post. An op-ed piece that she wrote on the Washington Post in collaboration with like um an association that's against domestic violence oh, okay. in okay. reference to him. So okay. this was about two years after like, I think it was in 2018, the alleged like abuse was around 2015, 2016. Uh. So what 
in this case makes you both of y'all so invested. This is the first time that Johnny Depp is telling his side of the story. Like from but his own mouth. But in every court also. case, it's like this one. And I mean, but they're celebrities. Oh, okay. I, I think the, celeb- the celebrity aspect has to, like if this was anybody else, it wouldn't have been that interesting. Yeah. One. Right. I mean, I just got sucked in after watching one episode of the live stream because I just thought it was so interesting how in a sense, right, this whole game, right, it's just they have to manipulate the jury because it's in the US, right, mm. to believe them lor. I think it's just interesting like what kind of strategies that they yeah. use and all that but the actual trial itself or the case I'm not fully interested I'm more interested in the strategies what yeah. is the what is the role of the judge then uh? hold up objection here's it if you guys are not yet subscribed to the Daily Catcher podcast subscribe also like this video back to the convo Cotton. She it's can like overrule. Lunch rules. break. <laughs> lunch break recess. Oh, like speak of all over there. No, but you. Kidding, kidding, yeah, kidding. Sorry, it's not lunch. It's recess. Someone still needs to mediate because in order to determine like what evidence can be brought forward, for example, right. uh, whether a line of questioning should be objected or not, right? And whether it's or valid. the sentence itself, maybe. Oh, but this is a civil suit. There's no sentencing, right? There's no sentencing. Sentencing is done by the jury. Uh, sorry, not, not so. So basically, uh, Johnny Depp is suing out. Amber Heard for for fifty million US dollars, lah. Right. And Amber Heard is suing what? him back for a hundred million because she's all about the money. No, but the funny part, worth. right? I don't know. But the funny part is, so Johnny has to bring in experts, right, to prove that he lost this amount of money in order to be suing for this amount of money, lah. Yeah. So they were proving that, like, based on like the pirates, like the box office and, and etc. etc. He would have lost over about forty million dollars. Mm-hmm. Then the extra 10 million he's suing for emotional whatever distress la. and yeah. yeah right and then Amber right she's suing for 100 so she also need to justify yeah. but then when they ask her then she say it's cause my role got reduced in Aquaman 2 and then that cost about like 2 million la. but it's not right. even the same because like Johnny Depp <laughs> she's suing for 100 has, like Johnny Depp has like uh, executive producership in like some of the movies he, he creates whereas Amber Heard was hired as an actress and not even actor. the main character yeah, yeah. Right. within an other 98 million is what no, so she brought in an expert also to say that it ruined the cu- the trajectory of her career, which she relates to Amber Heard being on the same trajectory as Chris Pine, uh, Zendaya, Gal Gadot. Which right. debatable, la. I mean, you, you <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have you have comparables like in like in like the startup world, so you use comparables. Yeah. It's hard to say whether or not. But all of them were main characters. She wasn't. She was a side character mm. for Aquaman. Yeah. Okay la, 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 Aquaman la. Quite a big She was co lead la, co lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I never heard of her until like Aquaman never and this. Nice. Okay, chill. Uh, we're gonna say this word a lot, but uh, <laughs> the joke maybe like. No, I will repeat this joke every single time you say. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I hear. Yeah. <laughs> I have listened. Uh, <laughs> no, have you heard of her before Aquaman and yeah. this Johnny Depp thing? Yeah. yeah. No, I really haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, really never. From really where? Never. Like, what's she known for? Uh, Johnny Depp she wife. was new in a few movies. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Okay, ironically, I can't remember where she, what she was in, but I remember her in like, something. <laughs> Something <laughs> or something, something in her. I'm literally going through oh. all her movies <laughs> and I can't find it. Mm. <laughs> Mm. What's her real name, by the way? What's her real name? Amber Heard. No, she has a middle name. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. She, it, she it, has it, done so many. She's not it. the kind that uh came up with a stage name. Huh? Johnny Depp is also Amber. Johnny. Amber Laura Heard. Oh, that's okay. That's, yes. a, that's the actual name. Okay, but before anyone can say that we are biased, I really tried my best, right, to go and look for people who support Amber Heard and why. So I go and scour the reddits and all that, right? Yeah. I don't know whether people are just afraid to speak up because they'll get shot down, but there's like this one lady that I found on Facebook that talked about how Johnny Depp himself has had many allegations of violence, that like he's been thrown out of bars and he has had right. suits that have been lodged against mm. him for similar, like, I think, like, aggression or, like, verbal abuse or something like that. Lah. So he's not totally innocent, which I believe he probably has dealt her some level of emotional abuse yeah. in the relationship as well. It was a toxic relationship, so both of them. Yeah. But just that she was the one that beat him up, like, for yeah. real. La. And cut off a thumb or some shit. A finger. finger. Yeah, with she, like, did, she didn't cut off the finger. La. She threw something at him. Landed then the bone finger, like, oh. shattered. So the head, You got see the cut. picture? Yeah. No. no, he went into the hospital. His finger got one hole like that. Like, half his finger gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then, uh, yesterday, <laughs> on the stand, he said, I miss it. <laughs> then everyone laughed. No, he's really never, and he really plays to the camera very, very well. And because which most of the attendants- Which makes him a him, better right? actor than Amber. 100%. It may not work with the jury, yeah. but again, going back to the point of like, Denise, if the idea is to fix his public image and to get everyone to like him again, it's working. La. So it doesn't matter really whether- At the cost of a hundred million dollars though. But, 
as of this moment, right, I mean, last night is like trial day 22, right? He was brought on as a rebuttal <laughs> witness for his side. And then the cross-examination by Amber Heard's side, right, actually put him in quite a bad light, right? I think if he lost the case, right, it would be because of him taking the stand again. Ooh, as of yeah. uh, May 25th, 2022. Yes. No, but like talking about specific highlights of the case, right? There were just some like, what the f moments. Like, for example, to me, the big one was when um, like it was disclosed that I think Amber Heard actually was the one that alerted TMZ to like the whole like allegations, right? And then she caught herself and she went like, oh my God. And then she pretended like she's stretching her face. Then I think there was another moment or so where like uh, Johnny Depp's lawyers said that, hey, you're alleging that this guy abused you, right? And then he whacks you and he hits you. So you bought him a knife as a birthday present and here's the knife. Yeah, yeah they brought out the knife for show and tells yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. in photos you can't see how big a knife is. Then it was like, oh. But what was it about yesterday's? Because it always felt like it was moving towards Johnny's side. What? What? Why did it kind of shift the balance? Okay, so if I can kind of summarize how a trial works for people who don't know what a rebuttal is, right? It starts with Johnny Depp's case in chief. So he's the one suing, right? So he will present his entire case, was bring out all his witnesses, and then after that you will go to Amber Heard's case in chief. After he rests, Amber Heard will present everything that she feels like he supports her case, then Johnny Depp will get a chance to rebut everything that Amber Heard has said. Their legal right. teams, yeah. yeah. So now we are in the rebuttal stage already. And actually tomorrow, they're actually going to go into jury deliberations already. So yeah. by the time this episode goes out, we will we have will the know, answer. We will right. likely know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happened last night was basically that he testified that like in these photos specifically, they were on cruise. Oh my God, do you know that they came to honeymoon in Singapore? Hey, hey. So it was a picture of them like on the way to Singapore. They were on the Orient Express, which is a movie. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah, the train. Then, <laughs> okay. After that, the staff asked to take a picture with them. And he had alleged that on the train, Amber had punched him. And in the picture, mm. you can see bruise and you can see kind of some scratches on his nose. Mm. Yeah. And then after on the that, honeymoon. In, he stayed at Raffles Hotel. And right. the hotel staff also asked to take a picture of him on the day they were checking out. And then in that same photo, you can also see bruising. Mm. So, right. but then during cross-examination, fun fact, the Amber Heard's like main lawyer is called Mr. Rotten Bond. Oh my Bond. God. Which is not, oh, I, so not my ideal name. Mm. But yeah, so Mr. Rotten Bond <laughs> brought up photos from before the trip we showed that he also has some form of like, uh, like, like bruise scarring. or what's like scarring right. under his eye. But then Johnny like became a bit defensive and said that's because of like the lighting and everything. Right. Yeah. And then, so he brought up a few examples of like texts that he has sent and all this. And then it was really quite hurtful to him. Like. He need the stage name, uh, this guy. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so he lawyer, right? Oh, wow. Rotten born. Yeah, people all call him Mr. Rotten. Quite sad actually. Is it not his fault? Uh? Is it just his class? Sounds like a character from like- can, can we do a quick pivot to last names? Uh -huh. <laughs> so right, um, <laughs> the same way right that you might list your friend, for example, uh, your, your your that friend that works in Singtel, then you will just call him Julian Singtel, or like that friend that that you buy chicken eggs from, which in the past you know your neighbor's a farmer, then it's just like egg or, 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 chicken or egg. barn or mm. Julian barn, mm. yeah, and that was how it began the last oh, name from the west. Yeah. Which is yeah. why like Michael then Schumacher- Then when families came together, they sometimes merge their last names. That's how you get. Wait, so how do we get to Rotten So Bond? Rotten Bond has <laughs> been a f***ing asshole, eh? way back, way back. He was probably born, no like So like Michael Schumacher, for example, right, his ancestors were probably shoemakers in, oh. in Germany. Because Schumacher in German is shoemaker in English. Also maybe Rotten right. Bond is another, in another language so means something else. So then all else. the holes are- <laughs> All those with the surname Ho. <laughs> Is it? We did as a family business. <laughs> oh, yikes. No, the <laughs> yours is what's <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mine's not very surprise. <laughs> 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 we undercover, then we switch it over. No, but Chinese were different. Yeah. It's the European side. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I don't like about like the, the, the law system and, and, and all these courts thing, right, is that lawyers are no longer agents of truth. Uh. Yeah, they are, it's so performative. They are yeah. fighting. Like, even if I believe this person is guilty, right? I still have to go and fight for this person. No, but that's their right, right. to stand trial though. Yeah, but some people, do Do all people deserve rights? Yeah. Yeah. No, wow. but I, I think that's important also. I, I, for this I thought about this also, <laughs> especially if you, you are like those social service kind of lawyer, right? Uh. Whereby, for example, some petty crime criminal <laughs> fuller that still need to go to court, then well, nobody can represent you. Then you, you are going to go there for 120 years. You're going to get a 120 year sentence. Then the government, will appoint someone to try and defend this fella some more on the government buck while the government trying to sue him, right? Mm. But actually quite important now, you don't do that, then that person will just get bullied into nothing because the other side is using private lawyers. You know what I'm saying? And I think like if the law wants to be about fairness, they have to give this yeah. due law to and both I think parties. Not necessarily to defend until there's no problem. 
but to bring out all the circumstances to see whether we can give a shorter sentence. It feels like it's gamified for some strange reason. And I mean, like we also know that there are so many processes that exist that are simply so that you can get paid or you can earn more from the process. Yeah. And this feels like one of them. No, but you go back to this also, like if a defendant, for example, right, there's so much evidence, evidence against them, but they actually really didn't do it. it. It's only fair that they actually have a lawyer to actually help to fight for them. Otherwise, the alternative system that you're thinking about that is more efficient might look like, okay, you did this, here's your sentence. Okay. No, maybe I kill somebody, but that person raped my daughter. Then if I'm not fluent in the language or legal language, mm. Then I'm just a murderer, ma. Then in which then there's some form of mitigation because he molests my daughter. Do I need to kill him for molesting my daughter? No, like, I should have called the cops. Yeah. I think the jury thing, right? I can imagine how this began. Not everything got jury jury stuff on, right? Because like <laughs> so, there are certain things that are very clear cut, right? Like you run a red light, you, you just get a ticket, that's it. There's no <coughs> jury. The judge will just, you know? That old guy on Facebook. That old guy on Facebook with his friend. Yeah, I don't know, he can bring his Pay friend. Leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but then there are times whereby, like for example, if let's say a judge in Singapore has to judge whether to give someone a death sentence or not. And you give a death sentence because clearly broke the rules, smuggle drugs into Singapore, then it feels like I'm just doing my job enforcing the law. Yet if you give chance and you say, let's, let's see, maybe he got children and we give him some mitigation factors. Then it's like, hey, society needs to be the one that will reabsorb him mm. when he comes out of prison. Is it right also for all of us to just let this very well paid no doubt very well learned men decide or woman mm. <laughs> very close to sure or we include a few members of the community that has to reabsorb this said person so jury represents society society yeah. mm. but at the same time right because the voir dire which is jury selection right has <laughs> become such a game like yeah. to purposely strike like people who are not favorable to your case or this then the sample size like not fair already though it's true yeah, yeah. like i think i was watching about the oj simpson case right and his lawyer specifically looked at every single profile of the jury and went like oh do they have like tendencies of slight racism or whatever right and was just like no 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 like they tried to game it so much that in the end he also like won the case something else that is very interesting that in uh, along the lines of the performative uh, argument right is like court attire like court attire is something that is very much looked at and I mean Amber Heard has been criticised for her choices lah because she's trying to say that I am the victim of domestic abuse but every day she's wearing power suits. Yeah. Mm. And I mean there have been some people who have noticed that she start to copy some stuff that Johnny Depp is wearing. <laughs> so that's quite funny. Like he wore this bee tie then a few days later she also wore a bee tie. No idea what's a bee tie but I'm gonna run with it. On the day of her testifying right then suddenly she wore this like cardigan that's a bit like tattered at yeah, the edges. Yeah, yeah. Like she looked very matronly and all that. Right. When she's trying to tell her story about being sexually abused. And then her makeup also, right? Her contour here, super strong. At the cheekbone. Until it looked like it's a bruise yeah, on purpose right. to signal to the jury. No, but the funny thing is that it really looks like the photo that she took. So it kind <laughs> of backs up that maybe she she makeup yeah. herself. And then yeah. when she mentioned about the bruise kit, right? Someone actually brought out the, I think a bruise kit that she may have been talking about. And then applied Everyone's it on- kit. She's saying that there's been this makeup product that I've been bringing around every single day of my life in my relationship with Johnny Depp in order to use it to cover up bruises. So she calls that her bruise kit. A bruise kit. in the theatre world, right, a bruise kit is the makeup that you use to make it look like you have a bruise. Right, right, right. So but, they, yeah, I know shit as well. Uh, the makeup that she held up to say she wore every single day, the makeup brand themselves came and said this product was not launched back then yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah at that point of time. <laughs> I think for me, like, I, guess, I mean, you were asking me also, like, why am I interested in the case, right? I think because it's also not clear cut. Like, we look at, like, cases like um, Harvey Weinstein, for example, mm. quite clear cut. <laughs> You know, he did it. <laughs> la, you know? But with this one, right, it's like, did Johnny really do it? Am I swayed by the <clears> online <throat> comments? Did Amber really do it? Or is it that they mm. both had such a toxic relationship? Maybe no one abused each other. Maybe they both abused each other. I'm and sure like, they both abused each other. Though. Yeah. But just not just, physically. Yeah. No, maybe. Maybe yep. it's like, like that. Like, have, have I pushed Pat before? Have. Abuse. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. This clip will be. The not, only not, in this anger, clip. not in anger. No, Even no, worse. Yeah, that clip. Yeah. <laughs> Just for fun. For fun. On the note of oh. abusing women. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this like girl on TikTok, right? That she like posted quite a long paragraph saying, I think it's so weird how people, specifically boys, are so quick to be interested in the domestic abuse trial when the victim is a man. Oh, I saw that too. Within weeks, Amber Heard had been cancelled and hated by thousands of people. Though I support Johnny 100% and there's clear evidence that Amber is abusive, I'm still waiting for people to have the same energy and hatred for Chris Brown, XX Extension, Nicolas Cage, Floyd Mayweather, etc. Nicolas Cage was wife beater. Uh, women, women. Allegedly, Allegedly on this post. What does she mean though? Didn't the exact same 
No, Chris Brown is still so hype. Like, why is he not cancelled? Like, Amber Heard is probably like her entire career after this is over already. Yeah, but, but her career was nowhere though. to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. No, I, I think like Amber Heard also was was hurt <laughs> saying uh, on recording that uh, you, you go ahead like I, Johnny Depp, was a victim of, of uh, yeah. abuse. See who believes you or whatever. <laughs> to be honest, I listen to that thing with a more neutral mind because I don't give a f- right? Nice. And because you like Amber Heard lah. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no he only In her young days, she quite chill, though. Be <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey, why would you say that? <laughs> hey, boo. No, you you said it with consent. It sounds like maybe Johnny Depp said, I'm going to tell people you abused me. That and is exactly like, Amber Heard's defense. Are you Amber Heard? Okay, anyway. Yeah. No, but, but <laughs> like, oh, yes, I'm going to defend Amber Heard today. <laughs> like, what Denise brought up is. What are your right? questions? There, there is a very weird relationship that I guess the, the male audience has with, like, the case because. First time in a long time. I with guess. A victim. For, about exa- time, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like, for me, like, because of the whole Me Too movement and whatever, right? It's not that, like, I don't think I did anything wrong towards a woman, but it's like almost like. Okay, hover right. hand. I don't even want to touch someone if I take a photo because like might suddenly say molest or whatever. You know, it's like we've been walking on eggshells for so many years and then suddenly it's like, wait, males can be victims too and people are going to believe it. So every time you take a photo with a girl and you put your hand, you are thinking of molesting her, but not. I'm not. I'm thinking oh my God, of that makes accusation. So much. <laughs> I'm thinking of like hover. Okay, just hover just in case, you know, like. Yeah. Or oh, just keep your hands to yourself and don't need to put like that. Yeah. That's why my photos are always <laughs> in my pocket. My hands are always in my pocket. That's a, that, yeah. yeah. But then maybe you'll be accused of touching yourself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, better. that's still better. <laughs> Throughout the entire case, right? Like, they brought up so much evidence of Amber taking photos of everything, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Except herself. Shit. And her shit. Do you all see this TikTok? <laughs> There's this TikTok of a man that, that they just read at a home tour with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. You see that one? No. <laughs> no he's just like, he's just like, hey, welcome to my house. Then like, this is, our, this is my living room. Then he's like, Amber, no, Amber down. <laughs> Amber is just on the couch trying to take a shit. <laughs> Like Amber, down. I think he's also saying that because she blamed it on the dog, by the way. She right. said it's the dog's turd. And then everyone look at the picture and then look at the size of the dog and then they're like... Then the camera mm. come back to her. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No so there way. there was a photo of her shit her on, turd. The on The housekeeper the came to take a picture because Johnny Depp had left the house after their argument the night before. Uh-huh. The next morning when the housekeeper came in, then she took a picture of the shit on his mm. side of the bed mm. and then sent to Johnny. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but, there was a big piece of shit in the bit. But can you imagine the logistics required? Like she had to squat for how long she had to like even get it. Maybe like, she had a lot of fiber in her diet and it was actually quite a smooth <laughs> oh, that's process. That's so bright. <laughs> that's yeah. really, I can't relate. Yeah. Just a quick one. So constipated. You know? Down the line where you're asking like, why are there, why would anybody still believe Amber at this point where she's being proven to be a liar, right? So her sister's testimony, <laughs> she has a younger sister called Whitney Hurt. Hot or not? No, less than her. She's actually one of Amber's more reliable, effective witnesses. And she testified to seeing Johnny Depp like hit Amber Heard, like, basically. And then- As any sister would. Uh, no, so uh-huh. that's the weird part. So because right, she was actually very close to Johnny Depp throughout him and her sister's relationship. So they would do drugs together. They were like drink together all the time. And then yeah, she testified yeah. to like really liking him. <laughs> and then so the Johnny Depp's lawyers asked, you are saying that Amber Heard has been telling you about all this abuse, but you continue to party and have fun with Johnny Depp. Doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so then she's saying that e- even when she started seeing like bruising on her sister, right? She just never, Allegedly. yeah, she just never connected the dots that like it was because of abuse. And like, she just like missed all the signs and all that. La. Yeah, and then I was just wondering like, is this really possible? Like, I mean, I feel like if I started seeing bruises on my friend, right, who I know is in a relationship with this guy that I know that they always fight, right? Mm. And she knows they always fight cause she always has to play mediator some more. <clears throat> right. Yeah. She was, uh, her nickname in the entire relationship was marriage counselor, like yeah. the sister. So then right. they were just asking her like, how is it possible that you me- want to mediate a relationship where you know your sister was being abused in? So I think it, like the question begs, right? Like how do you identify that your friend or your loved one might be going through a a abusive or like a toxic relationship because it's so hard to tell if they are not going to come forward but you feel like actually I need to intervene because like maybe they are in a cycle and they cannot break out of it right mm. and like I would imagine that like physical abuse is already like if that is already hard to spot right emotional abuse right is even more like flying under the radar I had a friend that was abused Still physically together, yeah mm. huh how long did he oh like how long did they meet together long like physical, what? how did you abuse? realize she just told me oh. Huh. And what what did you did do? You do? It's not like a a constant beat down, you know. Oh. It's like a fight, 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 fight. Then like one beat, 
but I don't know what the beat is. Could be a punch in the face, could be just right. push her away against the wall, that kind. Right. Then he left, that kind. But then they're still together after that. Still together. Like, say someone's been together for like six years, right? And throughout the relationship, maybe they argue verbally, but one incident of physical, like maybe one slap or one beat, is that toxic enough to say, I think you should break up with that person? I, I don't think that's what is defined as, as, I think we are conflating the two. One is abusive relationship, one is toxic relationship. No, one is just physical abuse. La. It doesn't have to be a relationship. Ma. Right. Okay, sure. Yeah. But I think within the, the term of like, it being a toxic relationship, right? Is that two people have come together and they bring out very negative traits of yeah. each other that maybe other relationships won't. It's like codependent like, so like, toxicity. Yeah. So I think with his case also, I think some of Johnny Depp's exes have come out to to kind of like vouch for him, right? Saying that th when they were with him, like they or, or the the Johnny that they know, right, is he will never do this kind of thing, one. Yeah. Mm. But I don't believe that because maybe they just didn't bring out the toxic side of him. Most likely, Amber. Amber did yeah. la, right? So she kept, I, I she don't kept cornering him. Yeah. So I don't think it's out of the question that he did become abusive or, or whatever. I think it's very, very possible. Yeah. In this sense of like bringing out the words in each other, right? So something that they brought was in a, if I can simplify to like fighting language. Like whenever they escalate, escalate, right? He's the kind that he will walk away on. Like he want to walk away. But then because of Amber and I think I mean I'm assuming lah, but it's also highly probable that she's struggling with some mental health issues that him walking away to her, right? Feels triggers like she's her. being shut yeah. down. Yeah, it triggers her. Then it escalates from there. So then because of the, like they just cannot reconcile that in a sense, that is yeah. the start to a lot of their fights. This is very common in a lot of relationships, right? Like mm. one person needs time and mm. space to cool down before yeah. they can address it. Then the other person is like, I need to settle it now. If not, I, he's going to kill, like bug my mind, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or rather one person doesn't want to settle it also, just wants to cool off and drop it. Yeah, huh, but and then isn't that just burying the problem? Yeah, it will come out again though. So I mean, my our relationship is not toxic in that sense, but like Ned and I are the same way, right? Like Ned needs time. She like sometimes needs between two to five hours to cool down ah. during a fight. Um, oh sorry, uh, man, but cool down in like twenty minutes. Yeah. I, I'm think the, memory I cannot anyone well. hold it. I'm the kind <laughs> that I can't cool down unless we talk about it immediately. Yeah. yeah, and so then like we always get into this position where I, like, I'm literally talking to her and then. Um, Stonewalling. She, yeah, because she needs to like gather her thoughts and everything. And so like, I think very early on in our relationship, like one, two fights were like that. And then we had to realize that actually, okay, I need to, I need to give you what you need, but you also need to understand that I just need to talk out loud. Yeah. Mm. And so like the compromise was that, okay, if you need to take five hours, how about you give me one? You've reached the point where you're okay with, she just sit in silence and you just one sided talk and she doesn't respond. You're okay with that. No, as, as a first aid for the first hour. Like, like now, like I've gotten to a point where I realized actually, is it worth talking about it or not? Or exactly, it, no, that's exactly what I mean, right? <laughs> We're not burying- no, all no, no, men no, arrive no. at this no, 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 not for everything. So yeah. like- Yeah, not for everything. It gives me now perspective to go, actually, this is damn small. Uh, yeah. Like let's, it, it's not worth it. Many or, times, right, the post fight debrief, right? Or the argument you have, right? Is no matter who you think whether it comes from a place of love or not, right? It's sometimes just meant to humiliate the other person, to make that person stare at their mistake. And sometimes, Especially if you're married or if you're committed to one person and you know that for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. yeah. Skip but I think it a few times. I think that only happens like later on in a relationship. Mm. Like at the earlier stages, right? Yeah. Like I think it's very hard to come to that conclusion. Because I think you're still learning. I think if you're older it. in life, maybe you can also. Oh uh, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Like there's there's two categories, like, right? There's one where you just want someone to tell you sorry and admit that they're wrong. But I think the other category of fight is really you're trying to learn about each other and what they are like mm. in a in a relationship. I feel like these are uh, obstacles that relationships need to overcome, yeah. but not necessarily toxic. I feel like toxic, right, is when, say you get into an argument, right, and then you purposely say shit to f with the other person right, to yeah. make them even more unhappy. Push their buttons, trigger think, them. Yeah, I think that one is- Which is so scary. common actually in the relationships that I know around me. Right, right, right. So it's exactly like you said, like the one person that, that wants time and the other person that wants to address now or wants to fight about it now, and There's a relationship that, problem. And one person wants to leave and the other person wants a reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so usually the girls cannot physically hold that guy. So she try and trigger him in a way that makes him confront the situation now, which can be words. It can be pushing <laughs> him. Triggering some memories him. for him. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you identify that in your own relationship, right? What do you do? Like say you are the you either you are the receiver or if, if worse, even worse is you are the person that does it to the other person and you notice it, right? 
then what? Is that an indication that you should bounce from the relationship because this is what that relationship turns you into? Mm. Or is it salvageable somehow? Because I, the yeah. one of the most toxic traits of toxic relationships is that it keeps you hooked in. Yeah. You cannot escape. You keep thinking that we can somehow make this work, man. Yeah. You know? You yeah. gotta be able to identify whether you're in a cycle. I think a lot of toxic relationships, they break up and then the um, part of them goes, yeah, he's so abusive, like, or he or she, I need to break up with that. And then after that, oh my God, I miss him. Or like, he's changing, you know? And then like, he's actually getting better. Okay, I get back together. And then when you're in that cycle, right? It's very hard to break out of it. I think if you find yourself, or okay, catch yourself in that situation, it's about giving yourself, okay, what does this person need to do to prove that they are now changed or better? And also give yourself a deadline for that to happen. If that doesn't happen by then, bounce. You need really good friends la, to like really pull you out of that situation. Yeah, and I think many times people don't confide in their friends because they don't want to change their friend's impression of their partner. Because yeah. it's important that your friends like your partner. But I had like one or two friends, right, where everybody around them is not supportive of their relationship, man. Yeah. But then they still like, I don't know, in a sense, like refuse to see reason. But also at the same time, it's not our relationship. So yeah. like what we've mentioned in the previous episode, right, that we are seeing the the low light reel, right, of yeah. their relationship and we don't know what is the highlights. But then what to do if like my friend doesn't want to listen and she's in a clearly toxic relationship. The best part I can, uh, is the friend tell me everything and then like, then we sat down and be like, okay, break up. I know it's going to be difficult. Mm. I will fill up your time for you. Okay, we're gonna go on holiday, we're gonna go in gym, we're gonna do this, we fill up the entire thing. Then they, okay, 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 okay. Next day they go back together. <laughs> I've experienced that also. <laughs> many times, I've gonna many times. Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you say with so much reverence. <laughs> it's also in the previous episode, check it out. Uh, so to finish up the episode on a lighthearted note, uh, oh, there's a subreddit on uh, Ask Singapore. What is your toxic trait? What do you think makes you toxic? Some responses of people were like, I'm not proactive. I only act when there's no other choice. Uh, some people say they were people pleasers, so they don't really live for themselves. They live for that other person. And then I think after a while, you feel like, fuck, I got no identity. I do that, but how's that make me toxic though? Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of it being a toxic trait because like I mentioned before, right, I think it requires that catalyst, which is that combination of the two, of the pairing. Yeah. Yeah, like you could have certain traits or certain behavioral patterns, right, that your partner never ever brings out of you. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there are, there are guys that just serial date one million people, lor. just cannot be committed. Is he a toxic person? Yes, but you can leave, then it's not a toxic relationship. But it, it, it's more about toxic combinations, lah, Yeah. right? But if someone is an enabler, right, in a sense, is that also their fault? I've read this story about this guy that he himself is a very jealous and insecure person. So he mentioned that what he actually did was, I don't know how he managed to like hack into like the girlfriend's like Wi-Fi system or whatever, right? Nice. Such that he can see who is connected to the Wi-Fi <clears throat> even when he is not at her place. Oh. So to the extent that sometimes if she say like, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm going out or like, oh, uh, I, I, I just want to rest at home. Then he will go and check. Like, right. are you connected to the Wi-Fi at home? Cause if you are likely you are home. Like, or like, if people are coming over there, who is this? Who are these people that are being connected yeah. to the Wi-Fi? So then that was like a toxic trait. But then, okay lah, I think that one the girlfriend don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wonder like, if she found out, right? Or I'm sure that there are situations where this person is jealous and insecure, right? And you are enabling that person by, in a sense, trying to help them fix their jealousy or insecurity by like creating more boundaries with other friends that they are not comfortable with, et cetera. And then is that then your fault? Mm. Like to what oh, point so is it- so many layers, to, I fell off already. To what point is it enabling and to what point is it respecting your partner, for example? When it comes to jealousy and insecurity and an extra possessive uh, partner. I feel like it's really hard to identify when you are in that relationship though. I think you need a third party, you need a mediator or a couple's counselor. Or you need to break up like, from that relationship. Then you learn for the next one. No, mm. I, like, like I don't think that is the ideal solution because not everybody has the so experience yeah. Or, yeah. or has grown in terms of maturity when it comes to relationships. And these are opportunities for them to grow, right? Mm. Yeah, to make the mistakes and grow. Lor. But it's whether how far they go with it and whether they can learn from the mistakes and whether like, for example, the partner can also forgive, lah, right? Yeah. yeah. How do you learn how to be good in a relationship or at relationships? Like, is it really just I have to go through like, no, I think you as yourself just needs to be a considerate person. I think that's just the foundation. I don't think it works that <laughs> no, way. No, but like, everyone thinks like that they are a considerate yeah. person. Like, everyone has different like barometers. You know, it'll be actually well, like- you fix it at first diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> Hypothetically, right, if relationships were like job interviews and then you had to give references, like your ex your new girlfriend has to call your ex-girlfriends for reference, 
or like you have to get uh like what happens when you like leave your job and then you are like the the interview the final interview exit exit interview uh. you see actually how could we have improved as people uh? then like wow everyone would just be better hey, i had an exit interview with my ex-girlfriend how did that you never be? like after you're like get past the emotional phase already. <gasps> be like, bye. Memory having a me. random chat that says like how come it didn't work out between us uh, you know or like a so <laughs> no la no la like uh, just, no me no yeah exit okay. interview uh, have la have have oh yeah because you want to like know how you can be better la, right? but the yeah. exit interview is not immediately one right it's no, after no, no, months you, later. you reconnect like, yeah, la. one of oh. the things that i still think about today right because i feel like a lot of the things I I foresaw, right? Oh. Foresaw. Um, like I got insecure and, and stuff like that because she went to poly and I was still in secondary school, right? Then while well, influx of new friends, then poly everybody suddenly become more attractive. The guys also like dress better. Then I still wearing school uniform. So like that whole thing became rubber. Then what I I know lah. Then what I have figured it out and I fixed internally. Didn't need right? the exit interview. But the one thing I learned in the exit interview, right, was that she got bored. She got bored really quick because we. We, after the first high of one year and I ran out of money, we keep staying at home. And I didn't know that bothered her because like, I like spending time at home. So like what? Okay, yeah, free food, mother pay, right? But I, that I, was one of her turning points. Eh. Right, right. I, she, yeah. I did another exit interview also with a therapist. Oh. Like one of my toxic relationships, right? Like ended, right? Wait, and one so, off. Yeah, one off. It was so bad, right? That I had to go straight into therapy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Then that one very interesting that I did the exit interview with that person in terms of how I right. process the relationship and then how to move forward. Wow. They want importance, yeah. A lot of clarity. But did that make you realize that but you then the were also- quit. The therapist quit after. This is too fucking traumatized. Yeah, I did like, I think like five sessions with her, then she cannot. <laughs> or she quit on you or she quit the profession? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if she quit on you, maybe because she cash feels scary. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> what, I was, I was trying to be nice. Her, I also know it's not. Yeah, then, okay. You know lah, I'm just, I thought we playing. But you just burst the bubble. No, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Daily Catch Up Podcast. If you've been involved in a toxic relationship in one way or another, do let us know about your experience. experience. Yeah, how do you spot these relationships? How do you get out of it? How do you fix it? And if you want to talk about the Amber Heard Johnny depth trial, please message me. I'm super interested in it. You can slide in my DMs. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Like this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Take a shit. Ember, down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't panic, everybody. It's not earthquake.